Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining me for this, the 12th Sunday of the Pentecost. This is a short uh, video of prayer and, uh, and the sermon for this week, and uh, please join us for our full worship on our Facebook page. The link will be below this video, and um, but uh, in, as long as, as also the link to our the worship uh, bulletin, uh, service bulletin for that uh, live video. So, um, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray the, the call out for today. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our readings, which I'm not going to read here, but you can pause the video here and read them yourself. Uh, Proverbs 9, 1 to 10. Ephesians 5, 6 through 21, continuing our, our reading through the book of Ephesians. And then John 6, uh, uh, also um, been reading in John 6 the last couple of weeks. This will be the last week, and then we'll go back to Mark, chapter, uh, verses 51 through 69. And our, our hymns today, here at Zion, we'll sing a couple of new hymns. Uh, Come, let us eat. A call and response, uh, I think an African hymn. Uh, the hymn of the day, O God, my faithful God, and uh, Seek Ye First. Uh, Seek Ye First, a newer song. And the um, children's hymn, Rise and Shine, a popular camp song. So, um, and then, uh, and so, we'll continue with the sermon. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now this section of John 6 that we've been reading through brings up several important topics. Uh, for example, resurrection and the flesh. Uh, that we are not just souls waiting to escape these bodies. Uh, Jesus doesn't just feed our spirits, but our bodies as well. Uh, this is physical food, bread of life. Uh, the physical food to strengthen our spirits and our bodies. Uh, also, another topic, unbelief. Because after this difficult teaching, Jesus doesn't chase after those people to make what he said easier to believe. He lets them walk away. Which relates to what I talked about last week in our struggle to speak to people, unbelievers of, of today. Uh, especially as the world has changed and we thought we knew how to talk to them. Um, uh, we do want to help connect them to God's Word in a way that they, then they open their hearts and minds to see all of God's Word. But uh, we can't just change God's truth to fit what they already believe. Sometimes we need to let people walk away from us. Uh, and uh, so, thanks be to God for the faith that He has given to us, calling us to Jesus so that we can say, with St. Peter, as we often sing before the Gospel reading, part of the Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Uh, eating the flesh of Jesus and drinking his blood should, uh, well, what do you think about? Hopefully, I think you know, the, the most direct connection should be communion, right? Uh, that seems to me to be the most direct one. Uh, Christians, uh, early Christians, were accused of being vampires uh, or uh, cannibals uh, for eating Jesus' body and blood. And since it re brings us to communion, the Lord's Supper, uh, why don't you grab your catechism, if you have one, or go online to a catechism uh, um, to, uh, to read with me, review with me, hopefully a review, but uh, if you're not familiar with it, to read with me. And um, go ahead and pause if you need to, and then, uh, then we'll begin. 
So the first question is, what is the sacrament of the altar? And you can read with me out loud. Go ahead, read it out loud, even if you're by yourself. It is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine, instituted by Christ himself for us Christians to eat and drink. Now, uh, these words are, this is foreshadowed by Jesus, you know, in what we're reading today, even before the Last Supper. Uh, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. I am the bread of heaven. Now, this is, this is difficult to understand. How can Jesus give us his body and blood to drink, eat and drink? How can bread and wine be the body and blood of Jesus? How can this, but then you might ask the same, likewise, how can the Son of God become a human being? How could Jesus do miracles of healing and and feeding or calming the storm? God is beyond our understanding, beyond what we can, can have experienced or comprehend. And when, as I said earlier, when the crowds had trouble believing, Jesus didn't tone down his words. Oh, wait, wait, you didn't understand what I was saying. It's not that hard. Let me put words you can, can understand. No, Jesus makes it harder. He says, if you chew on my flesh, chew on it. Uh, which makes it more than just a spiritual union. It's Jesus body in your mouth, between your teeth. Um, And many turned away, and as as Jesus let them leave. And he even challenged the disciples, aren't you going to leave also? So we, uh, likewise, we have the same thing today. Communion, the Lord's Supper, is Jesus' body and blood. And if you won't let yourself believe these words, of Jesus, then walk away. This is too important to pass over. This is forgiveness and eternal life. So the second question we hear often uh, in, in our worship service, where is this written? The Holy Evangelist, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and St. Paul write, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. We had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as I said, we hear that regularly. Maybe you don't have it memorized as I do, but why not? Here, go ahead. Uh, any questions? Now, it's, you can post your questions below if, uh, if you have any. I'd be happy to, happy to discuss that with you, but it uh, seems pretty clear to me. So, going on then, what is the benefit of this eating and drinking? These words, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, show us that the sa- in the sacrament is forgiveness of sins. Life and salvation are given to us through these words. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. This isn't deep theology that you can take or leave. This is part of the basic faith that is included in this small catechism. These are Jesus' words. Don't fight against them. Just believe them as he spoke them. And Matthew is the one who especially points out in the Last Supper that this is for the forgiveness of sins. The people in Jesus' day understood that eating a part of the sacrifice in a physical and spiritual way brought the benefits of the sacrifice to you. Jesus was sacrificed on the cross for your sins. So eating his body and drinking his blood in faith brought forgiveness and eternal life to you. But if you don't believe and still ate, then you are disrespecting Jesus' words. So you get the opposite. Not life and salvation, but the eternal punishment. And it's also why, as Christians, oh, now we could eat other meat, 
even if it's been sacrificed to idols, because we know that idols are nothing. But if it causes someone to offense, we shouldn't go participate in idol worship, eating the meat that's been sacrificed to idols. We, we, not, we can't mix up our confession of who God is with, uh, uh, and what he does. Uh, the idol is not uh, the Holy Spirit. You can't worship both. There is only one God. So then the third part, how can bodily eating and drinking do such great things? <laughs> yes, still a question that many today would ask, right? Certainly not eating and drinking do these things, but the words written here, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words, along with the bodily eating and drinking, are the main thing in the sacrament. Whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, forgiveness of sins. And going on uh, to the fourth part, who receives the sacrament worthily? Fasting and bodily preparation are certainly fine outward training, but that person is truly worthy and well prepared who has faith in these words, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. But anyone who does not believe these words or doubts them is unworthy and unprepared, for the words for you require all hearts to believe. So just believe Jesus' words, whether it makes sense or not, because what in the Bible does make sense? I mean, a lot of it doesn't fit our understanding or experience. Are we, we are not smarter than God, are we? Now, if we try to say that we should limit God to our, what we can understand, then God is, uh, we are, that's, a, that's not much of a God. How, that's not the almighty creator of the world. Why would you even want a God like that? So weak and small. Maybe you do. So you could think you can control him. Uh, but just believe his words. This is my body. This, are my, this is my blood. When you eat my flesh and drink my blood, in, you have eternal life. So, who's ready for some more bread of life? May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll confess our faith in our triune God with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in, all, uh, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.